Hello again everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are taking a look at the newly released Inibuilds P40F Warhawk. Once again we do have a little bit of a doubling up of aircraft here in the sim with big radials of course having previously released P40 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. In this particular case though once again we have the P40F which was fitted with a Rolls-Royce Merlin engine as opposed to the Allison engine of big radials variant. Anyway, I'm sure you'll agree, Inibuilds have done an absolutely excellent job at recreating the aircraft, it certainly looks very beautiful. And for those of you who aren't aware, I believe the Inibuilds team is also responsible for bringing us the Airbus A310, the Curtis Jenny, and a couple of other add-ons also within Sim Update 11. So without a doubt, they are a very capable development team bringing us some excellent add-ons into the Sim already. As a result, I was very much looking forward to the P40 and I had very high expectations for the add-on. That being said, any builds themselves are quite clear that the product is released but there will be further patches to the aircraft later on. So I think it would be fair to say that the product isn't quite finished yet and it does slightly feel that way to me overall. Nevertheless, the Warhawk does have its strength without a doubt and I'm looking forward to taking the aircraft on a flight today. We have a nice short hop lined up taking a look at some of Burning Blue Design's most recent releases. We're currently on the ground at Little Gransden and we're going to be taking the aircraft up towards Fenland. As usual, we'll carry out a full con dark start in the aircraft, we'll make our way up north towards Fenland, we'll be carrying out some aerobatic manoeuvres once we're overhead the airfield, and once we're shut down and back on the ground, we'll talk through what I think of the product. As always, ladies and gents, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. Today's video is more of a review flight as opposed to a full review, but we'll certainly take a look at some details before we get underway. So once again, I think, and I'm sure you'll agree, that any builds have done an absolutely superb job with the visual modelling of the P40. Certainly the modelling and texturing quality right up there with the very best, both internally and externally. And I think the PBR effects here on the polished metal as well, particularly good. The P40F comes with an onboard tablet, as you may well expect. There are a few nice features there, so we'll just take a quick look at those. Firstly, in a similar style to some of the other warbirds that we've seen in the sim, you do have the option to remove various panelling on the aircraft. So here, for example, we've removed both the top and the bottom engine cowlings, displaying that beautiful Rolls-Royce Merlin engine. And once more, the modelling and texturing of the engine overall very nice. The gun bays on the aircraft can also be opened up both on the top of the wing and underneath. You'll notice a little bit of a glitch there with the decal on the top of the wing. Currently, that seems to have been misplaced. It's not placed on top of the panel itself. I have to say that's a little bit of a scrappy bug, it feels like something that should have been picked up before release and there are a couple of areas on the aircraft which I feel should have been polished up before release, we'll talk more about those as we go. But nevertheless, excellent detail throughout the aircraft, there are just a few bugs here and there which I'm sure we'll see fixes to as we go. You can see as well we have the option to install some tie down ropes on the P40. Currently I believe the aircraft is only available for purchase outside of the sim so you will have the weapons functionality available. You can switch as well between a civilian and a military version of the aircraft. But as always do just be conscious if the aircraft does release onto the Intim marketplace then you won't have any weapons functionality available if purchased there. The internal modelling and texturing very much as good as the externals, a beautiful rendition of the P40F from Inibuilds. Again, not really a whole lot I can fault with the modelling, the texturing is excellent, the colourisation and the weathering as well, very nice. As usual, hopefully you'll get a good feel for the cockpit here as we go. The system's fidelity is a little bit hit and miss, which came as a surprise to me. There certainly is quite a bit of functionality there, but equally there are quite a few switches which don't work. Again, that came as a little bit of a surprise given what we've seen from any builds with the A310. I was really expecting a study level rendition here of the P40F. As with the visual modelling, hopefully you'll get a good feel for the aircraft systems as we go and we'll touch on those again towards the end of the video. As with many add-ons now in the sim, the Inibuilds P40 also comes with an onboard tablet. Fairly simplistic in terms of its capacity but nevertheless some nice functionality. Firstly we have a moving map. Just making use there of the default sim map. In terms of maintenance, this is really the most interesting page of the onboard tablet. As you can see we have the various options which you'll have seen externally already to open up for example the engine cowling, the gun bays, add the tie downs, things of that nature. We also have a maintenance tab though which I think is quite nice. You can see that spark plug wear is modelled, tyre wear as well for example. We also have a weather information tab. Here you can obviously enter the ICO airport code and it'll give you some basic information about the current conditions. Certainly a nice piece of functionality to have there although perhaps of limited use in the P40. 
We have a timing option, again just a simple stopwatch and a timer there, potentially useful I suppose. And lastly in terms of settings, as discussed, you can switch the aircraft between both a civilian and a military variant, namely there that's switching out the guns, and of course the gun sight. So again, fairly limited I would say in terms of EFB functionality there, but nevertheless some nice options. And of course, if you do want to remove the EFB, thankfully you can, all you need to do there is click on the switch below the ammeter, you'll get rid of the tablet, and in this case with the military variant of the aircraft, you'll bring up the gun sight. So good morning and welcome to the cockpit of the P-40F Warhawk. As discussed, we are currently on the ground at Burning Blue Design's Little Gransden Airfield. We're going to be departing off the westerly runway here this morning. As usual then, we'll get the aircraft ready to go, so running through our pre-flight inspection. The landing gear handle is selected down, flaps are selected up. Fuel selector is off, throttle is closed, mixture can come back to idle cutoff, and the prop RPM lever can come fully back. Parking brake is set, battery master is off, generator is off, fuel pump is off. The starter switch cover is checked closed, carb heat is set fully cold. Attitude indicator we can cage up, and we do have the flag. You'll notice there, caging up the attitude indicator also seems to cage up the turn slip indicator which seems a little bit strange to me. Anyway, cow flaps are selected fully open. For the start, we'll come through to the rear wing tank on the fuel selector. You'll notice throughout the sounds are really good on the add-on, I have to say, especially in terms of the cockpit controls, but certainly as well in terms of the engine sounds, which you'll hear in just a moment's time. So fuel selector, we are on the rear wing. Throttle will set one inch open. Mixture can come through to the fully rich position. And the prop RPM lever can go fully forward. Battery master is on. Generator is on. Fuel pump can come on. Fuel pressure is checked. We'll prime the engine, so just around 5 seconds here on the primer. Max can come through to both. And just checking the prop area is clear. And we haven't done this for a while, but we'll give everyone a shout. Clear prop! And we can engage the starter and just listen to the engine sounds, really excellent. You'll notice as well, really nice smoke effects. So that's certainly I think how a Merlin V12 should look when it fires up. Really nice, as I say, excellent smoke effects there. I think the heat haze is a little bit overdone, but we'll talk more about that in just a moment. So we do have a good start, we'll cage up the starter. Oil pressure has come up into the green. So start switch is closed, oil pressure is checked, oil temperature has come up nicely. We're just looking for above 50 degrees there before we start the taxi. Coolant temperature, we're looking for not above 120 degrees. No concerns there at the moment, but we'll get ourselves out to the runway nice and quickly. Flaps, once again, are selected up. Cow flaps will leave fully open for now. And the attitude indicator there, we can uncage. No flag. Do a quick flight control check. So flight controls are full free and in the correct sense. Coolant warning is extinguished, part brake can come off. Come back on the stick. Just taxi ourselves out towards the north just so that we can clear any obstacles behind us. We'll carry out the run-up though more or less in our present position. So far the aircraft feeling pretty easy to taxi. Fully back on the stick as I say. Just using a little bit of rudder here and the aircraft turning very easily. Again that heat blower really rather overdone I would say. We noticed that of course as well on the Inibuild's Curtis Jenny. Anyway part brake is on. Again just moving clear here of any obstacles behind us. Preparation for the run-up, and you can see we are all clear. So for the run-up itself, the part brake is set. We'll come up to 1800 RPM. It's 1800. We'll check the magnetos, so first on to the right mag. And we have about a 100 RPM drop there on the right. 
back to both. And onto the left. Same drop there on the left, and again, back to both. Just cycle the prop. Just a very minor change there in RPM with the prop cycle, but we are fairly low RPM still currently, so that may be accurate. About 100 RPM drop there with the prop lever fully back. And again, fully forward, you can see coming up to around 1800 RPM once again. Temperatures and pressures, a little bit high there on the oil temp now, just above 100 degrees. And that coolant temperature getting right up there as well, about 110. Again, we don't want to exceed 120 degrees. Come all the way back to idle on the throttle. And idling there around 750, 800 RPM. That oil temperature slowly coming back. The coolant temperature there, though, not really moving, which is probably fairly accurate here. We haven't got much wind around today, so nothing to cool us down engine just sitting here and warming up the coolant. So as I say we'll have to make a fairly hasty taxi here out towards the westerly runway which is what we'll do now. I'll join you again once we're down at the uh, threshold for runway 28. Okay, so we're now down at the threshold for runway 28. You can see they're looking at the windsock. There's not much wind around. It's a fairly short runway here as well, so we'll take some flat for the takeoff. We'll go with two stages. So 50% on the flaps. We're going to be using 50 inches on the manifold pressure for the takeoff, again, with it being a short runway. Temperatures and pressures look good. The coolant temperature there seems to have topped out around 110 degrees. We don't seem to be climbing beyond that. And for the elevator and rudder trims, they're both set for the takeoff. Part break off then. A little bit of back pressure on the stick initially. And bringing the throttle through to 50 inches manifold pressure. Power is set. Temperatures and pressures looking good. The RPM there just looking a little bit low. 2300 RPM. Seems, as I say, a little bit on the low side. Not sure whether or not that's accurate. The aircraft tracking quite nicely here. Straight initially by itself. Needing a little bit of rudder to correct. We're looking to lift off around 100 miles an hour, already airborne. Tap the brakes and bring the gear in. And again, with that coolant temperature being pretty high, we'll come straight back here to 40 inches on the manifold pressure. We'll just leave the prop lever where it is for now. Climbing nicely straight ahead, we'll get the canopy closed up. And the flaps can come in as well. And we're going to make a left turn here to come back overhead the airfield, and then we'll track out towards the north. We're looking for a heading of around 010 out towards Benland. That coolant temperature now right up at 120 degrees. We don't want to go past that as we discussed earlier on. So we'll come back to 30 inches on the manifold pressure. Again, the RPM seems to be a touch on the low side, but that may be true to life of the P40. There's little Granston just off our 10 o'clock. As I say, we'll make a pass here overhead the field, and then we'll track out towards the north. We'll stay on the rear wing tank for now in terms of our fuel selection. We'll take a look at our fuel state in just a moment. Still 120 there on the coolant temperature. Hopefully once we've got ourselves levelled out and built up some airspeed here, 
That should start to come down. So, just coming overhead the airfield. And again, looking for heading for round 010 out towards Fenland. So, looking good there now on the heading. We'll just let that speed build up. Try and get some nice cooling air going through the radiator. From what I've seen so far, you can't actually overheat the engine, but we'll try and operate within its limits nevertheless. Up to around 200 miles now now. And the trim doesn't seem to be particularly sensitive, certainly needing quite a bit of trim input here to actually level the aircraft off. Come back as well now on that prop RPM. Go with 30 inches, 2500 RPM for now. So good on this heading, speed coming up. 220 miles an hour. Tracking out to the north for now, we should have Peachborough off on our left later on. In terms of our fuel state, we're down to around 40 gallons in the rear wing tank. And we've still got 35 in the front. So I thought what we'd do here is we'll continue out towards Fenland. We'll talk about the aircraft a bit as we go. Overall, I very much like the P-40, but I do feel currently that the aircraft does have a reasonable number of issues. It doesn't feel like a finished product yet, and indeed, any builds themselves have stated there is more to come. Main gripes for me at the moment, I would say again that the exhaust effect seems to be a little bit overdone particularly on the ground. That has obviously cleared up now that we're passing through the air, so that's reasonable, but I don't know whether or not you'll be able to make it out in the video. There is quite a blurry effect looking out the front. I don't think that's even caused by the prop disc. It's almost as though we're actually going slightly out of focus occasionally. It's fine out the side of the aircraft. But again, out of the left and right front quarters, just a slightly blurry effect there, which does make sightseeing that little bit less enjoyable. Obviously you can see for yourselves though, there's a lot of potential here with the P-40. It's an absolutely beautiful visual rendition of the aircraft. The sounds are excellent as well. So I think that any builds have certainly got the basics right. Again, it just feels to me as though there's still work to be done and it would have been nice to have waited for that work to be done and had the product a little bit more towards the uh, finish line. So 120 still there on the coolant temp. And again, we've got the radiator fully open currently. You can see there we are in the ground cooling position. Not taxing the engine too hard. Yeah, so certain details just look like they need fixing up a little bit more. As I say, for example, we looked there at the uh, the decal on the wing during the introduction. The gun sight as well seems to be somewhat half finished at the moment. I don't know whether or not that's by design, but there's no binder glass there currently. Systems-wise, there's a little bit hit and miss. There are all of the systems that you would need for ordinarily operating the aircraft, more or less functional, but there's plenty of switches as well that aren't functional in the aircraft. For example, you can see here, none of the circuit breakers work. Same for the cockpit heater. And generally speaking, if you go around the aircraft, you'll find quite a few switches that uh, are not operable, which is a shame. I was expecting a little bit more of a study level effort from any builds, given that they've provided us with the A310. And of course, once again, we may expect to see further improvements. There's probably more systems fidelity to come. I do like the fact as well that we've got the uh, the tablet there. Not so much the tablet itself, obviously it's nice to have, but the fact that we have some basic maintenance functionality there in terms of the spark plugs and the tyres, things of that nature. Just coming on to a northerly heading here, we're slightly out to the right of our planned track currently might just about be able to make out Peterborough there off at uh, 11 o'clock in the distance. It's quite tricky for me to make out to be fair with again that sort of blurry effect out of the front of the aircraft. As I say it's quite tricky to make out whether or not that's the uh, the prop. I don't think it is. You can see that behind the prop disc there still blurring in and out slightly. That's quite strange that one. I can't quite place my finger on that. 
In terms of the aircraft overall handling though, during the takeoff I think pretty good. It's easy enough initially to control the aircraft during the takeoff run. We'll just come back to uh, auto rich now on the mixture. Yeah, so as I say, during the takeoff run it was pretty easy to control the aircraft there. Initially, the P-40 track's very straight. There is a bit of a swing later on in the takeoff roll, but I was able to control that with rudder. Same in pitch. Nice and easy to get the aircraft smoothly off the ground. And then in terms of hand flying at the moment, enjoyable so far. I will say that in roll the aircraft feels really good. Just putting in some aileron input there, nice and smooth. The aircraft definitely has a bit of feeling of weight to it. Putting in about half deflection there. And overall the control response feels pretty reasonable. Just for the sake of demonstration here, if I go very quickly back and forth on the ailerons, you can see that overall the uh, aircraft doesn't really have time to respond. It stays pretty much on our heading. In pitch though, much different. That's just putting in very minor pitch inputs there on the joystick. And again, the P40 seems to have that fairly typical Microsoft Flight Simulator handling characteristic of being really rather sensitive in pitch. There also seems to be quite a lot of dampening there. You can see that more or less straight away the aircraft returns straight back to uh, level flight. So the flight model not quite what I was expecting. Although it is worth keeping in mind here that the price point only around £15. So obviously very good value for money overall in terms of what you're getting with the visual model, the sounds as well, the functionality there on the tablet. And as usual all of these criticisms are not purely to take a uh, dig at any builds or anyone else, it's just for your information so you can get a feel as to what the product has to offer. I'm certainly very pleased with what I've seen so far, it's just noticeable that there are certain areas that could still use some work. Okay, so we're just coming up a beam Peterborough, which is off the left wing, so we should be approaching Finland fairly shortly. We'll keep a good eye out for that off the nose. Just come slightly out to the right here to put Finland off the left wing. We're going to make our way into the aerodrome. As usual, we'll carry out some more manoeuvring here to get more of a feel for the aircraft flight model. But we'll just do that overhead Finland itself. In terms of our fuel state, down to around 25 gallons now on the rear wing tank. And I do seem to recall the same being true of the big radials P40. The aircraft absolutely drinks its way through its fuel supply. You don't have very long in terms of endurance. I think though that makes it quite interesting to fly for whatever reason. We'll just stay on the rear wing tank for now. We'll switch over to the front wing tank just before we begin our aerobatic manoeuvres. And again, we should have Finland somewhere off our 11 o'clock position. A little bit tricky once again though to uh, spot anything with the hazy effects there out of the front of the aircraft. I think you can see the runway there just off to our 11 o'clock. So we'll switch through to the front wing tank. And haven't managed to get that coolant temperature down at all. I think we've been running the engine fairly conservatively, so I'm quite surprised there to see it still pegged at 120 degrees. We're going to disregard that for now, just so that we can come up on the power again for our aerobatic manoeuvres. we will come up to 40 inches on the manifold pressure. Again, we do have the cow flaps fully open, so there's not much more we can do there. Up at 3,500 feet, so we'll just roll in, we'll go for a loop initially. Again, overhead the top of the airfield. Certainly can't complain about those engine sounds though, really loving the sounds of the P40F so far. So it's lining ourselves up here with the runway. Just coming up on 350 miles an hour. And we'll come back on the stick. The aircraft feeling a bit more reasonable than pitch for this sort of manoeuvring I have to say not quite as sensitive as it was before. Just go for the half loop for now. We 
We'll go for an aileron roll, full deflection out to the left. Roll rate there seems pretty sedate. And again, Fenland just off the left wing. We'll build up a little bit of speed, we'll go for a uh, high rate turn. Coolant temperature still pretty much pegged there, 120 degrees, so it doesn't seem to be going up or down at this point. I think the engine modelling is better than many other add-ons I've seen in the sim, but certainly could still use some work versus something like the uh, Flying Iron products. The aircraft also fairly slow here, you can see to accelerate. I'm not entirely sure how accurate that is. We're actually in a slight descent here as well and nudging up through 200 miles an hour. 40 inches on the manifold pressure. We are getting max RPM out of the aircraft now, they're up at 3000. So just coming up on 250 miles an hour, we'll come all the way back on the stick. So pretty instantaneous turn rate there initially, but nice to see the wing snapping. Quite liking that behaviour overall. I think the initial turn rate is a little bit much. But certainly if you just keep back on the controls, you can see there the left wing wanting to drop. Go for a stall. Try power off initially. So speed coming back through 100 miles an hour, that was our lift-off speed during the takeoff. Still coming back on the stick. And sure enough, not full black deflection there, but the wing snapping out to the left. So overall the low-speed characteristics of the P-40 feel pretty plausible. The aircraft definitely doesn't like to get too slow. Trying to keep an eye out for Fenland here. Should be just down below us. And there it is off the right wing. So we'll go for a power on stall. Again, 40 inches on the manifold pressure. And we'll just keep back on the controls this time once the aircraft goes into the spin. Almost full back stick again, that left wing wanting to drop. Fully back on the controls. Fairly sedate spin there, we'll close the throttle. Easing off the stick and the aircraft self recovering more or less. Yeah, so as I say, quite like the low speed handling characteristics. I think overall they're pretty well done. Just go for one more loop and then we'll bring ourselves back in towards Fenland. We'll go for the full loop this time. So lining ourselves again up with the runway, just coming up on 350 miles an hour. And back on the stick. P40 certainly very good fun to throw around with these sorts of manoeuvres. I'd say it's right up there with the rest of the warbirds in the sim more or less in terms of enjoyment factor. Again, just not quite the same level of polish yet as we see from a typical flying iron warbird, but I'm sure that will come. Yeah, so the aircraft definitely very good fun, enjoyable and nice to uh, throw around, pull some aerobatic manoeuvres. We'll just bring ourselves around for a low speed pass and then we'll join back into the pattern for a uh, left hand downwind. Out towards the south. Again with there not being too much wind around here, it's not really particularly important which direction we land. The runways here at Fenland as well look to be about the same length in either direction. It's going to be a pretty tight landing here for the P40 but we'll give it our best shot. So again up to 30 inches on the manifold pressure.
Rolling in towards the airfield. And back up to 40 inches. And it looks like there's a little bit more wind here actually, so we might take the east-west runway. Coming down runway 18. And we'll break off out towards the east. Back to 30 inches now on the manifold pressure. We've got the westerly runway just passing off the left of the aircraft. We'll make a bit of a teardrop approach back round onto final. Speed rolling off, we'll take the car heat as we come back on the throttle. We'll open up the canopy once again. Below 175 miles now, we can take the gear down. We're good there on the speed. And for our downward checks, brakes are checked and off, undercarriage is down, mixture set to auto rich, fuel pump is on. In terms of our fuel quantities, down to around 15 gallons there in the front tank, 25 in the rear, so we'll switch back over to the rear. Just turning back out towards the west. Light instruments are checked, harness is secure. Maintaining around 150 miles an hour for now, we can take the flaps down below 140. Just hold off on the flaps till we've got ourselves more or less established here on final. Runway just out start 10 o'clock. Speed's still good. All clear on final. And speed to check will take 50% flaps initially. So again, half flaps. Visibility over the nose of the P-40, of course, not great, but I do find with full flaps actually a little bit better than similar aircraft, so we'll go through to full flap. You'll notice there quite a bit of ballooning as we do so. So we'll maintain 110 miles an hour for now down final approach. Final checks, pitch is full fine, undercarriage is down, flaps are set. Landing clearance not required, the runway is clear. We'll get rid of the car heat. I find that the P-40 is pretty high off the ground, at least in terms of how it visually looks when landing, so I definitely find myself needing to flare a little bit higher than I think. And again, it's a fairly short runway here at Fenland, so we'll aim to land as close as we can here to the touchdown zone. We'll have to brake fairly aggressively as well to get the aircraft slowed down. And maintaining 100 miles an hour now, just so we don't carry any extra speed over the threshold. So cutting the power a little bit early here just to help. And holding the aircraft off. Let's touch down a little bit firm. Again, onto the brakes fairly aggressively, all the way back on the stick to keep the nose up. Okay, so we're just backtracking the southerly runway now, running through the offline checks. Flaps can come up. Got some traffic there just off the right wing, so we'll keep a good eye out for what he's up to. 
Looks like he's joining onto the southerly runway. There's a control tower just off uh, one o'clock. And again, just trying to keep clear of this Cessna. Looks like he stopped, so we'll swing ourselves around. Hopefully he'll keep clear of the nose. Onto the parking brake, and once again running through the aft lane checks. So the flaps are up, cow flaps. Again set to fully open, and again that coolant temperature hasn't really budged. Parking brake is set, fuel pump switch is off. Mixture can come back to idle cutoff. Nice sound effects there, I like as well the fact that the prop jumps around there as it shuts down. So mixture is set to idle cutoff, prop RPM lever can come fully back. Throttle is closed, fuel selector is off. Magnetos are off, attitude indicator caged, generator off, and the battery master off. So there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed our outing in the Innie Builds P40F Warhawk. I do think the aircraft is a nice offering, particularly at this price point. Again, it is a very beautiful rendition of the Warhawk in terms of its visuals and its sounds. As we've already discussed, I do feel as though the add-on slightly missed my expectations, perhaps I've set them slightly too high, but we'll discuss now, as usual, what I think of the product overall. A few negative points to start off then, and I think my biggest negative personally is that the product does feel slightly unfinished as it stands. Once again, any builds themselves have said that the product will receive further updates, so there is still work to be done. I do think the Warhawk is already a very solid offering, but I think again with it being any builds my expectations were just that much higher. The main reason that I say the product doesn't feel quite as finished as I would like, for example the decal on the top of the wing we've already discussed, but it's an obvious bug, it should have been picked up ideally before release. And really there are just a few other details around the aircraft like that decal which I feel could use further refinement. For example in terms of pilot avatar options you've only got the default Microsoft Flight Simulator avatars which don't really fit in with the aircraft. And similarly as far as I could tell there was no way to visually remove the pilot from the P-40. The default viewpoints were certainly very usable but it may just have been me, they felt to be slightly off centre. The heat blur from the exhausts I think is a nice touch but again I do feel it's been a little bit overdone there. It does make visibility out of the front of the aircraft pretty tricky on the ground. If that's accurate though then fair enough, I apologise if I've brought that up incorrectly but I suspect it's not true to life. Again, at least not quite to the same extent as we're seeing here. We spoke as well about the blurriness out the front of the cockpit during the flight. Again I presume that's to model some sort of heat haze but it feels a little bit off to me. Anyway, once again, the point I'm really trying to make here is there were more details there that I thought could use some work than I was expecting to see. I really thought with the P40 being an any builds add-on, albeit very reasonably priced, that we were going to see a very highly polished, very highly finished, rather thoroughly modelled high fidelity version of the Warhawk. As it stands, I think what we're really seeing here is an aircraft that fits somewhere between the Aeroplane Heaven and Flying Iron products, although to be fair it is much cheaper than the competition, at least in the case of Aeroplane Heaven. It is important to note though I didn't find any major negatives with the product, really just minor niggles here and there. And some of my negatives really come down to personal preference, for example I would have liked to have seen more systems depth on the aircraft. Any builds have stated that they plan to put out at least two post release patches, although I have to say looking at the notes there, nothing too significant that we can expect. Patch 1 will cover initial bug fixing, which should take care of most of my minor gripes with the product. We're also going to see an update to the EFB with basic route planning features added. Personally, I can't say I'm all that excited about that as a feature, but nevertheless, of course, it's a nice functionality to have. With patch 2, we should see fuel system improvements on the aircraft, including the addition of a drop tank, which I do think would be great. Apparently as well, ground handling on the P-40 will be improved. As we discussed during the flight, I didn't find it to be bad, but it certainly feels a little bit basic as it stands. But that's about it in terms of the patch notes currently, so I'm not sure whether or not we're going to see improvements to, for example, the engine modelling any further improvements to the system's fidelity of the aircraft. But ultimately, looking at the patch notes there, it seems as though the P-40 is going to stay around this level of fidelity. In terms of middle ground, I would say both the flight model and the system's fidelity of the Warhawk fall into a bit of a middle category. By no means bad, I do think it's above average, but we've certainly seen better add-ons in the sim. The aircraft's flight model does apparently make use of the new CFD implementations within Microsoft Flight Simulator, 
both for the primary flight controls as well as the propeller. I do think that flight modelling became particularly apparent during the low speed test that we carried out. The P-40 seemed to handle pretty nicely at low speed, pretty decently as well during the takeoff and the landing. Generally speaking the aircraft was enjoyable to fly in the cruise, we already discussed so I think the aircraft is a little bit pitchy, again fairly typical in the sim. And generally speaking the aircraft just felt to be a little bit snappy in pitch, it was very quick to return to centre after making an input on the stick. All in all I would say at least during the cruise the aircraft just felt that little bit planted, that little bit on rails. Systems wise, once again all of the major systems are modelled and modelled quite nicely I would say, but certainly most of the ancillary systems aren't modelled on the aircraft. As I've already said, it's not a huge issue of course, but being an Indie Builds product I was expecting more systems depth to the P40 overall. In terms of the engine modelling as well, a little bit of a mixed bag there I found. Certainly there's more nuance to the engine modelling than we've seen with certain other warbirds in the sim, for example there you'll notice that the coolant temperature did creep up as opposed to going straight to a sort of default value. Indie Builds claim themselves that the Merlin engine has been authentically modelled, delivering a true to life performance experience curated with empirical evidence from pilots rated on the type. So far be it for me to say that the engine modelling is inaccurate, but hypothesising there I was quite surprised that we didn't see the coolant temperature come down at all. All I can really go off there is other warbirds that I've flown both in Microsoft Flight Simulator and in other sims. And certainly plodding along at 30 inches on the manifold pressure with the cow flaps full open, I would have expected to see a reduction there in the coolant temperature. In short, as with many other features, I think the engine modelling is nice, but I do think there is certainly room for improvement overall. In terms of my positives, very easy to sum up there really, it comes down to the aircraft's visuals and sounds. As I mentioned earlier on, I think the visuals in terms of the modelling and texturing, right up there with some of the very best products that we've seen in the sim. The PBR effects, particularly on the polished metal livery, are spot on, it looks very photorealistic under the right lighting conditions. And other than the one or two minor visual bugs which we've already discussed, I think the visual modelling of the P40 is exemplary. The sounds on the aircraft again generally excellent, I will just carry out that with one minor point. But firstly in terms of the engine itself, once again I think it sounds excellent. According to any builds, they did make use of real world P40F recordings, and I certainly think that shows with the quality of the sound both internally and externally with the add-on. Internally I really like the engine sound, I think the control sounds as well within the cockpit are great. Externally I do like the sounds themselves, but I feel they could perhaps just use a little bit more volume. My only disappointment with the sound set, once again the P40 as with most add-ons, seems to make use of the default Microsoft Flight Simulator sounds in terms of the ground handling noises for example. I don't know about you guys, but I'm starting to get a little bit tired of hearing those, they fit in okay with some add-ons, to be fair they fit in reasonably well with the P40. Either way at this point it tends to break my immersion a little bit when I hear them. Nevertheless once again I think a very nice effort at capturing the sounds of the Merlin engine and the P40. Though certainly if you want a beautiful and evocative recreation of the aircraft then I think you can't go too far wrong with any builds version. I do like as well that we have some additional external fixtures and fittings, again that's fairly typical in the sim now but it's always nice to have. And the fact as well that we can open up the gun bays, the engine cowling, really nice touches there, great to be able to see that Merlin engine. In terms of effects, overall the aircraft very nice, I think the smoke effects are the best I've seen in the sim so far during the startup. Nice licks of flame as well from the engine exhausts, I do like the heat blur but again I feel it's currently a little bit overdone. I've questioned before whether or not that is something the developer can adjust or whether or not it's just a stock standard sim effect, I'd be certainly interested to know. Lastly, in terms of its FPS, the P40F is a very frame rate friendly option. I was getting around 62 FPS in the aircraft versus around 65 in the default Cessna 152. In summary then, I do think that any builds have created a very beautiful add-on, both in terms of its visuals and its sounds. And in fairness, to reiterate, at its price point I do think the product fits in pretty well with the competition. Again there are future improvements to come as well, so a product certainly worth keeping an eye on. If you're looking for an enjoyable warbird experience within the sim, something to stir the senses a little bit, then I think the P40 ticks those boxes. If however you want a highly accurate recreation of the P40 in terms of its systems modelling, its engine modelling, then currently I would say that the product isn't quite there, but hopefully with some future updates that will nudge things along a little bit further. As always ladies and gents, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving it a like. If you want to see more content from the channel, then please consider subscribing as well. As ever, a very big thank you to my channel members and patrons for all of your support, it is hugely appreciated. I do hope that all of you are having a great day wherever you are, take really good care, and I will see you all again soon.